Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week we're going to talk about watercolor sketching, pen and ink and watercolor, and how to take it on the go. My setup, which I'm going to share with you, all fits into one one gallon Ziploc bag. That's pretty portable. So if you've got a minute, let's do some pen and ink watercolor sketching. So today I am sharing my portable watercolor setup. Uh, this is what I take when I paint on airplanes or plain air or when I'm traveling just so that I can have all my stuff in one uh, gallon Ziploc bag. And that's everything I use in one gallon Ziploc bag. And, uh, that's pretty convenient for traveling or for um, when you need to be on the go and you don't want to carry anything super heavy. So um, out of the blue today, um, my dad... Uh, sent me flowers. He sent me these autumn flowers and it was a really nice surprise and the card basically said I love you and I miss you which I thought was super sweet. Um, you know just this is for no occasion so it really made me smile and I thought I would really love to do a demonstration painting a couple of these flowers from the bouquet because in essence that way I can save the bouquet I can um, save it forever as a watercolor pen and ink sketch so and I must share also that this uh, thumb ring that I always wear is my father's wedding band so all right then, so the, the one gallon bag. Um, so let's see what kind of goodies are inside of here. So what I've got is, first off, my Koi, um, my Koi watercolor pocket field sketch box. I love this because it's got the little finger thing in it so you can hold it in your hand uh, this way. And it opens up to reveal mixing area here and this tray is also for mixing and this tray comes out and um has little feet on it so it can set on the side if you're stationary um but it'll also uh plug into the side uh like this and you can uh, and you can hold it um if you're if you're out in plain air and you're standing uh so you can put this all in one hand and have all this mixing area so what it also comes with the Koi box are two little sponge inserts right here. And these are for wiping uh, your brush, the water off your brush. Um, I don't use these so much because they end up getting real dirty. Um, you can run them under the water and squeeze them out. But uh, what I like to use is just a regular old paper towel. So I keep a, a, a good quality um, paper towel in my box. Um, and, uh, also another thing you can do is a small pack of tissue, um, cause you're really just using the towel to sort of wipe water, uh, off the brush and to wipe, uh, some color off the brush. So, uh, a nice quality Kleenex, uh, uh, small pack of tissues works as well. Everything needs to be compact in here. So we're, we're going for small, but one good quality paper towel will last you a long time. You can, you can wipe your brush on this for a really long time. So. Okay, so the so those are the paper towels. Let's put this in here. Let's set this aside. All right. So the next thing that I have, this is kind of cool. It's a little cup. So some occasions I can actually have a little cup of water. Some occasions I don't have a cup of water and I use the water brush. And that is a brush. Um, that's a good segue to the water brush. The water brush is uh, a brush uh, basically with a barrel uh, like a pen that's filled filled with water. So the water is already in the brushes. And basically when you squeeze um, on the sides, the water flushes through the brush. So that's for two reasons. One is that that's how you clean the brush. So you would, um, so you would squeeze the water through the brush um, and it comes out like that, and then you you would rinse and get all the color off the brush, and then you would dry it on your paper towel. Um, the other thing is to wet the palette of colors, you squeeze a little dot of water in each color from the brush. So when I don't have access or ability to use the water cup, I just use the water brushes. But if, I'm, but if I have um, the ability to use the water cup, it allows me to rinse the brush and clean the brush without squeezing out so much water out of this because squeezing the water through to clean the brush uses a lot of water that's in the barrel and then you have to refill it. So 
I use, I like to use it with a little cup of water when I can. So this cup was actually printed, printed on a 3D printer by my nephew. He made it specifically for my watercolor set, which is super fun. Um, but you can, I'm sure, find a little cup. Um, the next item that's fun and nice and small is a friend of mine gave me this baby uh, brand Enfamil water. And uh, the bottle is good because the cap is real tight and has a nice seal and it is meant to hold water. So I just refill that um, and I have it in my little cup. And again, it's small and portable. It's reusable and the lid is snug and keeps the water from spilling. So now I've got my little cup full of water. And, um, but like I said, you can definitely use the water brush without a cup full of water. You're just going to want to have something to refill the brush with. Now, this is a wide mouth bottle. So in terms of refilling this water brush with a wide mouth bottle, that would be kind of hard. Um, I find that refilling the water brush, uh, with a water bottle, uh, a, is a lot easier because you have a small, a small mouth to refill these. So if you have a small, if you're going to, refill these you feel like you need to refill these a small one of those small half size water bottles uh would be a good uh, thing for refilling all right so what else do i have in here i have a kneaded rubber eraser and that's what i use to erase my pencil lines um the kneaded rubber eraser the way to clean it when it gets all covered in graphite is to knead it so you want to stretch it and pull it and fold it over itself, and that's how you get it back to clean, because when it's clean, it's a nice, very light gray. So stretching and kneading is how you clean the kneaded rubber eraser. Okay, so, and I use that to erase the pencil. So the pencil is the first drawing tool that I use. So where is the pencil? I use a mechanical pencil to draw because I don't have to sharpen it. It's got the lead in it and I just um, keep dispersing the lead and it's a very fine lead. This is a 0.3 millimeter um, and it is by Alvin. Um, all of these products are gonna be on my um, Amazon shopping resource page under watercolors and I will provide that link for you. So I love the mechanical pencil because I don't have to sharpen it and um, I'm using this, this uh, Alvin brand pencil. So that's what I start out with is a pencil line. And then when I do the ink, I'm using a Micron pen because this is archival ink. It's permanent and fade proof. And that's really important. You want to make sure that it's an archival fade proof pen. Um, Sharpie markers are not fade proof. They're permanent, but the sun will fade them. So you want to make sure that your marker says that it is permanent. I love the Micron pen. This is a 0 0.5. It's a really fine tip. Um, this is the tip that I like to draw with. Uh, it, they come in a wide range of tips and it, it, you can test them out and see if there's one that you prefer, but I love this tip. And also, this is a sepia, uh, so it's a dark brown. It's not black. And the Micron pen comes in all kinds of different colors. So if you wanted to sketch in pink or red or blue or green, you could do that as well. So um, that's kind of a nice option or embellishing some line work. So maybe you sketch in sepia, but you want to come back in with a green pen and just embellish some of your greenery. Okay. So um, next I have a handful of Derwent Ink Tense pencils. So I have a handful of sort of landscape colors um, of the Derwent Inktense pencils. Um, they're all sharpened and these are blendable with water. They're intense color um, and that's why they're called ink tents. And they're called ink tents because once you blend them, they're permanent like ink. So they're not watercolor pencils. Um, they're permanent like ink once they're blended. So once they're blended and they dry, they don't move. But the uh, color is very intense. So you can add some intensity to your watercolor um, sketches with these pencils. I don't always use them, um, but I'm going to demonstrate them today. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Okay, so we have the pencils. And next, and last but not least, coming out of my bag is my uh, sketchbook. And my sketchbook is uh, made by Handbook and distributed by Speedball. I really like this because it's got nice quality paper in it. Um, it's got a bookmark, uh, not that you need to remember what page you're on, but it's got really nice quality paper. And when you want to do a sketch all the way across, it lays open nice and flat because of the way the binding is stitched. So the last sketch that I did 
goes all the way across. So the grape vines um, go all the way across and this just lays nice and flat so that you can do that. And that's kind of fun. So, and the paper quality is really nice. And the other thing that I like about it is it's got a pocket in the back. So if you're out and about um, and you uh, find some papers or some leaves or some things that you want to keep to uh, refer to in your sketchbook, you can put them in this nice pocket in the back. So that's helpful too. You can put notes in there or um, I like to um, to find papers when I'm out and about and um, because I enjoy um, gluing ephemera down and putting watercolor ground over it and painting on top of that. That's a whole nother lesson. But while I'm out and about, I will grab papers with that in mind and put them in the pocket in the book. Okay, so so let's get started. So let's find an open page here. And I'm gonna go vertical because of the flowers. And I'm gonna, I've got my water brushes and I'm gonna try to make sure this is all in the, in the screen, okay. And um, I've chosen two pieces out of the bouquet. This one, cause I thought it had some great fun shapes with these little berries on the top and the, the cool little stems and a uh, carnation. So I chose these because I think they're uh, simple flowers. There's some mums in there with about 6,000 petals and I didn't think that that was a good choice for a beginner lesson. So um, I tried to choose simple flowers. Uh, there's a lot of petals in a carnation, but we're going to simplify that. So I've got these um, sort of set off to the side and I'll uh, hold them up as a reference. Um, I'll hold them up and look at them and then we'll draw that way. Uh, it's hard to draw from them in the vase because you can't see them and they're all clustered straight up and down. So you may want to take your floral elements out to draw. You can cut the stem short and really put them there to look at, um, off to the side to look at while you're drawing. Uh, this is a good excuse to send yourself some flowers. If your dad hasn't sent you flowers recently that you can draw from, um, you can send yourself some flowers. Why not? So really the key to drawing is to just really look at your subject nearly as much as you look at the page. Um, that's important. And then just render it in simple shapes. So you want to look at the most simple shapes and, um, and draw that and just, um, just go slowly and just draw the best you can. This is a, a pen and ink sketch with watercolor and we're working in our sketchbook. It doesn't need to be amazing. It's not going to hang over your couch. It's for relaxation. It's for drawing practice. Uh, it's for, um, personal enrichment, uh, all those things, but it's not meant to be stressful. So that's why we're doing it in the sketchbook because at the end of it, we're gonna close the, the, the cover and we don't need to show it to anyone if we don't want to, but we have gained drawing practice and painting practice and hopefully uh, some Zen time. So, okay, so here we go. So the berries are oblong and they've got a point on the top and then they've got two leaves at the bottom, basically and then the stem comes down. So I'm gonna carefully look at this and draw it sort of in a simplified manner. I'm not gonna layer tons of these all on top of each other. So I may choose to render only three or four of them as if this were uh, sliced in half. So this whole cluster, if I take, let's go ahead and do this. If I take this one off and sort of get it more to a flat so that you can sort of see it all just like that it might be easier for you to envision than many layers on top of each other. So, so you can always do that. Simplify, simplify, whether it's visual simplification or whether you actually pick apart your flowers and eliminate some items so that they're easier to look at. Now the next element is going to be the carnation and the carnation has got some, I'm going to open it up a little bit and I'm going to notice that the petals are very frilly along the edges and that it's got a real specific shape underneath 
where it's got these triangles on top and then this uh, vase-like shape that holds all the petals and then the connection of the thin leaves where it connects to the stem like that. So those are the shapes that really let your eye know it's a carnation. So I'm going to focus on getting those right. And that is going to come along the next uh, left-hand side. Now, being that this is a tall vertical page, we are sort of running out of room for the carnation off the sides, but that's okay because, again, this is the sketchbook and not a finished piece of art, and we're just doing some practice. Um, I like this travel book because it opens up wide for a landscape and it packs up small, but there are certainly different sizes of sketchbooks, and when you're working in the studio, you might like to start with a larger page or even a spiral-bound pad um, or just a pad of... Um, of um, watercolor paper, but I do love the portability of the book and the fact that it closes up and keeps the pages nice and flat and protected. So, all right, so next um, we're gonna keep these on hand so we can refer to them for color, but next we're going to um, put a border. Let's put a border on this. So I'm gonna just bring sort of a rough edge down. I might indicate a leaf sort of coming in the border and then, um, I would like to have an element extend out of the border at the top as well. So let's consider drawing in another pod and letting it go about the top. Okay, so now we have the pencil sketch and we're going to come now in and ink the line. So what I want you to consider is not closing up all the shapes and creating a line that completely makes every shape closed and sort of like a coloring book. Think about leaving some open spaces and think about um, applying pressure on the pen to make thick and thin lines. So the more you press, you're going to get a thicker line. And then if you draw very lightly, you'll get a lighter line. That'll give you a difference of line weight. Um, so some variety of lines, some open areas in your shape so they're not all closed up and sort of um, some nice line quality. So I'm going to uh, now ink this in and keep those ideas in mind.
Now that I've inked the lines, I'm going to use my kneaded rubber eraser to remove the pencil. So here you can see I've got some heavy lines and I've got some very light pale lines and I've got some openings in my shapes and I've got some variation of line. And this is a nice looking sketch because it is not all filled in with line. So now what I like to add in sometimes is a little bit of um, mark making. So uh, that involves some cross hatching, uh, which is just straight lines maybe to indicate some shaded areas. And it can also involve some stippling and stippling is just dots. So little dots to indicate some darker shading areas. And that's just some embellishing line work that I'll add now, a little bit now, and I may even add a little bit more after the watercolor paint is dried. I may come back and add more ink embellishments. So now I'm at the task of coloring in my pen and ink sketch or painting in my pen and ink sketch. So I'm going to start with um, my round tipped uh, medium brush. Uh, I would say that the round tip medium brush is the one that I use the most um, somewhere. This is a, a very small flat and this is the, uh, the medium round tip. Uh, I've also got a uh, very fine detail brush and a really fine point. Now you can get the watercolor, uh, the water brushes in several different points, ranging from pretty wide flat chisels to to uh, small rounds in different shapes, and they're not very expensive. So a pack of five or six of them in different um, nibs is is really kind of nice to have. So what we're going to do is, um, actually, I'm going to start with the wider one that I have, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lay in uh, some water in the background so that I can sort of put in a little bit of a background wash. And I'm just laying clean water in where I want the paint to flow because the paint will flow with the water and it will not flow in the areas that are dry. So water is the vehicle that makes the watercolor move. And when you want it to move and be loose and watery, you're gonna add water first. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of a medium green into the water. Now I'm going to take my medium round brush and apply green to the leaves and the stems.
Now I'm gonna come back to my medium round brush and work on the carnation. Now that the watercolor is laid in, I can come back in with the pen and add some more embellishments when I'm sure that the uh, area that I'm drawing in is dry. There's a decent amount of water right there and I don't wanna get the pen in the water, so I'll sort of come over on this side. Now, as an embellishing touch, in addition to the line work, I'm gonna come back in with some of the Ink Tense pencils for my darker areas and I'll blend them out. So you, they draw just like colored pencils and you don't have to blend the lines out um, into watercolor. You can always just leave them as line work, um, but I'm gonna show you how you blend them. So in here, I wanted to darken this down a bit more than it is. So I'm just gonna sort of color in here like a colored pencil. Let's take this dark red and sort of add some darks in, in the base of the carnation petals. And then some of the dark green in here as well. So I'm gonna get my water brush, I'm gonna squeeze through it to make sure the tip is wet, and then I'm just gonna come in, this is the detail small brush, and I'm gonna blend that red. And they blend with water beautifully, and the color um, is really intense. And I'm gonna squeeze the brush again to get some more water to come out. And you can see that, that deep bright red 
uh, is really enhancing. Now I've also got a, a light orange. You can draw into while the while the water is wet, and you can see that um, I'm uh, actually bleeding the orange right with the water. So uh, let's see, we could do that over here. I could wet this down, and then I can take my orange pencil and I can draw into the water, and it's giving me a whole different property than it did when I drew on it when it was dry. So you can draw into wet uh, and it'll blend with the water or you can draw dry and then, blend, and then blend it out. So you can sort of experiment with that playing back and forth. Here I'm gonna come in and again, I'm gonna squeeze water through the water brush and blend this green. And I'm gonna blend this all out so that it looks just like paint and it's sort of just darkening down what I've already got there. And then some of these elements. So you can see how this works really nicely together. Um, I've got uh, just that little bit of orange here, and that was really pretty when I had it in over here. So let's let's add some of that back in and blend it. I just like the uh, extra um, effect of the ink tents and how you can embellish on top and um, draw into the wet and sort of just, just add some, some more texture and layering to your watercolor. So there you have it. Thank you for joining me. I hope this inspires you to try your own watercolor sketching. And I hope that you will consider, uh, I have one spot left in Bella Botanicals, and that is my Tuscany watercolor sketching workshop that is May 30th through June 5th of next year. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.